like me to send a message. Hi. Sorry about that, guys. Um, we are live now. Um, Pierce, I'm having some issues with my streaming software today. And I got started without realizing that it was not live. So uh, I am talking today about PC71 Flambe. And this is a copper red glaze, just like PC70. But this one is more of a purple toned uh, copper glaze. And the first thing that you'll notice when you open a jar of flambe, really, really, really thick, and do not thin it. Do not add water to it because it is meant to be thick. The way that it works is it has materials in it that create a localized reduction inside the glaze so that uh, it, it changes the copper, which would normally be greenish or clear, into a red glaze, just like a high fire reduction copper red glaze. So I've heard people who say it's not a real copper red. It is a real copper red. It's a real copper red that you can fire in your electric kiln, but part of the, the, the balancing act of this with the chemistry is it has to be applied thick. So for an example, I'm going to show you, I already applied one coat there. It's drying. It does take a little while for that, that coat to dry. So I'm going to show you. This is one coat of uh, PC71 Flambe, and you can see that it's basically clear. And this is one thick coat. It's not, uh, not a thin coat. This is one thick application. Uh, this is two coats. And you can see how it's starting to show a little bit of color. And this is three coats. And we finally have some color. And these were all fired to cone five. Now, it does make a difference. So you do need to apply it thickly. And uh, I'll also tell you, one of the things that I have found with PC71 uh, is that it does form these little beads, these little calcifications. They're not oolites, in case you're wondering, but you do need to remove them. If you do not remove them, they will be like a little lump in the glaze. So I wait till the glaze is dry, and then I just brush them off. Uh, I know some people will suggest that you um, uh, sieve the glaze, but it is so thick that uh, you can't really sieve it without watering down the glaze, which then is a problem because you don't want this glaze to be watered down or else you're going to be applying like six, seven coats to get the right color. So I just go through and brush them off, just like you're seeing me do. With each coat, I brush off those little, those little beads. Okay? It doesn't, it's not hard to do. It just takes a moment to remove them. And, and yes, our lab is working to figure out why these happen because we don't find them in the materials. We just find them in the mixed glaze. But they are not oolites, and they do not grow. So they're always going to be little tiny beads. So now that it's dried on there, I'm going to make sure that the lumpy spots are gone. And I'm going to apply another coat of glaze. So I wanted to show you how I apply those out of my way. So as I said, the glaze is very, very thick, and you want it to be thick. So uh, I already glazed the inside of this vase earlier. So it is, I'm not going to apply glaze to the inside of this in this video. I'm just going to glaze the outside. And you see how I'm just spreading the glaze on. It's not 
it's not like brushing on paint. It's really like spreading the glaze. And that is the most important thing is thickness of application. And most people, when they're having issues, it is a thickness of application issue. So it will make a big difference. Another thing to keep in mind is because this is creating a reduction inside the glaze, uh, if you fire it and it doesn't have enough color, Applying more glaze and refiring is not a good solution. It will, the, the reducing materials have already burned out. And so you will not get better results. You have to get the right application in the first firing. So I also want to show you uh, a, the difference in cone temperature. So this was one, two, three coats at cone five. This is one, two, three coats at cone six. It's not a huge difference, but you can see it's more red at cone five and more purple, almost going into blue. This is cone six. This is cone five. So it's more red at cone five and more blue to purple at cone six. So that is a difference. Uh, another trick that some people have used that works pretty well, and I've done this and it, it does work, is applying a coat of HF9, just one coat, on top of the three coats of, uh, on top of the three coats of flambe. So this is actually cone five, so it's going to be more red. But this is one coat of PC71 Flambe. You can see it's more red. Let me see if I can get a zoom. There we go. This is two coats of PC71 with one coat of clear over it. And this is three coats of PC71 Flambe with clear over it. And you can see how it does make a difference. Application still matters. You still have to get a decently thick application, at least two heavy coats of glaze, but it that clear glaze helps to hold the reduction in so that it doesn't uh, escape and it doesn't need to be quite as thick. So you can get away with two coats, two thick coats with a one coat of clear over it. So I'm going to ask if anybody has any questions at this point, please go ahead and drop them in the, in the comments. Um, and David will convey those to me. With each coat, it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. So I'm going to show you some other things that we found. So number one is thickness. Number two is firing. So depending on how hot you're firing, you're going to get slightly different results. I think that flambe looks best at cone six, but it's also going to break more at cone six. So be aware of that. But one of the other things that we noticed is how much clay body makes a difference. So this is, this is Little Loafers, and this was fired to cone five with flambe on it. And this is Sabelco's white studio stoneware. And you can see it is a big difference between the two. The, the little loafers gives you more of the purple, where the Sabelco Atelier Masa Weisse is more uh, blue, almost purple, purpley blue, frosty color. And we noticed this with several different clay bodies. Here's Sabelco's black clay, which gets a little bit of the blue. Let me make a little more space so you can see these up close. Uh, 
Here is Laguna's B Mix. This is, uh, sorry, this is Kentucky Mud Works. I think that's Iceman. This is Frost Porcelain. And then here is Coleman Porcelain. So these two porcelains come out more red. Coleman Porcelain comes out more blue. And we are not really sure what it is that makes the difference, uh, but it does make a difference. So clay body, depending on your clay body, you might get different results. This is Aardvark's Nara 5. So they're all a little bit different. They're all nice, but if you're getting more of a blue result, you may need to, to change your clay body to something else. So I'm going to put these away and get back to, let's see how my glazing is going. Have I gotten any questions, David? Uh, you haven't. I haven't. I'm worried that we don't have anyone watching right now, but uh, I still have, sorry, still have a little bit more time to wait on this. As, as I said, it does take a little while to dry, so I want to let this dry, and when it's completely dry, I'll rub those, those little bumps off and uh, apply a third coat. And I'm probably going to fire this to cone six so I get this kind of purpley blue result. Uh, if I want to put the clear over it, I get more of a red purpley result. But if you have more questions, you can message me. Uh, I'm on Facebook at Amico Brent. And uh, there is also, if you go to amicobrent.com, we have uh, a troubleshooting guide for Flambe. So let me know, drop it in the comments, and hopefully I will see you next time.